Can you give us a tour of one of these pastured poultry pen and give us an idea of inputs and outputs? Sure. So the shelter is 10 feet wide, 12 feet long, and 2 feet high. The reason it's that dimension is because you can make it smaller, but it's the same effort to move one small as move one big. If you make it bigger, then you start getting into too much weight. So the whole goal here is to have something that's so portable that it's actually fun to move. The single biggest problem that people encounter duplicating this is they make them too heavy, either by using dimension lumber that's too big or using steel. All this adds weight and then it's not fun. So the whole idea is light enough that you can move it, but heavy enough to not blow away and predators to dig under. Maybe I should move one just yeah, to show how easy great. this is. Let me grab the dolly. Don't underestimate the value of this tool right here. Everything about this is really critical for ease of function, but this is the tool, not a tractor. So we come up to it with the dolly and just stick the two shoes under there like that and then you just that breaks the ground but not enough for the chickens to get out and then we go up here <clears throat> pull the feeder the chickens just walk on the ground as we move it forward and now the chickens have a totally new salad bar they have new bedding they get away from yesterday's manure, and that took 30 seconds. And then we just go pull the dolly out. And then you go to the next one, the next one, the next one. The point is that with this little tool, in 60 minutes, without starting an engine, without owning a tractor, one person can move 4,500 chickens in 60 minutes in one hour. And that's canceling your gym membership too. It's canceling your gym membership. It's canceling your pharmaceuticals, your vet bills. It's canceling your predator issues as well because the chickens are completely contained. Weather issues, it makes sure the chickens are on a brand new place every day and it gives you all the positives of pasture without the negatives of weather and predation and all that stuff. And you do this without any machinery except this. That's the thing. Folks that are selling these big hoop structures and schooners and all that stuff, I don't wanna denigrate anybody, but I can tell you that it makes a big difference whether you have this and a little $300 shelter versus a $7,000 structure plus a tractor to move it. That's a game changer. Pay as you go, debt free, yeah. and you're up and running. Brand new, all this, the lumber, aluminum, accoutrements, 300 bucks. That's not your labor, but all you're going to do is not watch TV. <laughs> so, yeah, don't worry about the labor. And emissivity of aluminum versus steel is about four times different, meaning that it will absorb four times less heat energy. So you're not baking your chickens. Did you know that, Joel, going into this? No, I didn't know that. I just knew that all the poultry houses, the Tyson, Cargill, all use aluminum roofing. I didn't know why, but well, those guys, they're not stupid. You know what else people are canceling because of this? They're town jobs. <laughs> Yeah. People are canceling their town job. Absolutely. So, so speak to us. Okay, so in one of these shelters, we put 75 birds in, and we normally take at least 70 out. I mean, you're going to lose to anything from pneumonia to a crippled leg to whatever. So let's just assume we take 70 birds out. Our average price is $15 a chicken. Gross. 15 times 7 is $1,050 per shelter, and each shelter runs four rotations a summer. So it's six months. The birds are in here for five weeks. If you run four rotations of five weeks, that's 20 weeks times $1,050 is $4,200 per season through one of these. It's not that much harder to do too. No, because the cost is in walking out to the field. If you're going to walk out there, you might as well do well, two or three or 50. These things add up. And then from a land perspective, we run an average of 500 birds per acre. In other words, if you add up the square footage per day times the five weeks times the chicken, it comes out to one acre every 500 birds. 500 times 15 is $7,500 per acre. So for a small acreage, does this take labor? Sure it does, but there's no free lunch. The fact is you can't do that with beef cows. You can't do that with sheep. You can't do that with meat goats. You might be able to do it with selling first rate expensive raw milk dairy. You might be able to do it with raw milk dairy, but there aren't very many things with livestock that you can turn that kind of, we're approaching garden type income. So to be able to turn an income on a small acreage, the small animal, yes, it takes more labor per acre, but you can quit your town job. Yeah, so there's a lot to recommend. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing about these things.
So these are for the rabbits. So we move these once a day. And these are so light that they don't require a dolly. They just slide. A 10 year old can move these real easily. The hairpin and the Millennium Feathernet are probably the two models that we have here that are the longest evolution. Years, decades in getting to where we are today. I could tell you stories for a long time about all the things that we did, but when we finally came to this, it really worked. Well, why did you insist on putting them on grass? Well, Daniel, this was Daniel's entrepreneurial project. We're, we're big believers in child entrepreneurship. And of course, everything here is on grass. We're a cult on grass. So from the get go, the whole idea was how do we run these on grass? Will they actually mow somebody's lawn? Well, yeah, you can go up here and see where they've been. So we're moving them downhill. You can see the squares where they've been. One, two, three, four. They're not mowing it like a mower mower, but they're definitely mowing it. And it's not like cow pies. Rabbit pellets are not like cow pies. How much can they eat from the land? Daniel figures that they're picking up at least 70% of their diet on the land. So we figured up one day just for fun that one acre of grass put through rabbits is worth about $50,000. Speaking of dollars, <laughs> what's your input on this thing? What can one of these pens do? So we bring them out at six weeks, they get weaned, and then and we dress them at 12. So they're in here for six weeks. Each rabbit sells for about 25 bucks. They're about eight bucks a pound times three pounds. So you could even just say 20, make it simple. So each one's big enough for a litter. We can put anywhere from two to eight or even 10 if the litter's real big. We try to put each litter, that's what this is. This is the bunnies of number 45. That way we can select for genetics. If we wanna keep for breeding stock, we can track the litter all the way through to slaughter. So that's how we identify for genetic selection. So if you figure six weeks a piece, this is a deal like 24 weeks, they can be out here in the summer. So 24 divided by six is four rotations. If you say the average is six bunnies per rotation, that's 24 bunnies at $20 a piece is $480 per one of these. Wow. We call this nook and cranny farming. <laughs> this is nook and cranny farming. I mean, this is cool because all the infrastructure is portable. You can move it from yard to yard. You could do in a suburb with chickens and rabbits. You could hook together two, three acre suburban backyards and be in the farming business. You have some supplement right there. Right. In an automatic feeder under the shed mm -hmm. and then your water. water. Cool. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Thank you. Next up, we are going to go into the racking house. That's rabbit chicken. They're working together. Could somebody scale this down to a garage? No, oh, it can be in a garage. This can be scaled down as small as you want to make it. Give us a tour. Tell us what's going on here. Well, what's going on here is, first of all, you start with deep bedding. I mean, deep bedding. Wow. It's 18 inches. It's way, I'm not, I don't know where. <laughs> it's way down there, okay? But here's what I want you to, if you feel that, that's warm. Oh, wow. Feel that? Whoa. This whole thing is actually a very, very gentle composting. It's not even wet, but that's the microbial activity that's going on in the bedding. So the idea is that the chickens aerate the bedding under the rabbits. Rabbits urinate, so that adds moisture, and that actually helps the composting. I mean, it's actually better right under the rabbits. If you go over here, you can see that there's better. Now feel that. Whoa. That's crazy. Smell that. <laughs> Boy, I really trust you, don't I? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can put milk on that and eat it for breakfast. <laughs> Listen, if you didn't have the chickens here, in one week it would stink in here because the rabbits are pooping and peeing. And if it just sits there, there's no decomposition. So the chickens keep this aerated. This is the best compost we make on a farm. It's gentle warmth, long, multi-species. When do you harvest this? So what we do here, sometime around Thanksgiving, 1st of December, all of this will move to the hoop houses okay. and pigs will okay. go in here. And that way all this fragile rabbit and chicken stuff won't freeze and pigs will go in here. They can take any kind of temperature and they will do the final heavy turning in the spring. We'll clean it all out with a front end loader, put in a new 18 inches of chips, start the whole thing over. Oh, so only load it once a year, only empty? Only load it once a year and empty it once Where? a year. 
the permaculture concept of, of stacking here. So you've got two enterprises, you've got chickens on the ground and rabbits up above, you're using cubic footage, not just four linear footage. And so we can actually produce more volume per linear foot than even a factory farm, but none of the densities is high enough to kick in pathogenicity. So you can have the chickens at 70%, the rabbits at 70%, 70% plus 70%, 140%, we can have 140% production, but not have the single density of a single species at a density that actually creates issues. You notice there's a lot of animals in here, but there's no smell, zero. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can eat a sandwich in here. I notice you don't have perches. No. Is, why? The chickens just sleep on the floor. Look, a lot of chickens don't, you have to train them to a perch. I got onto this long time ago. I asked an old timer. I said, you know, I built this beautiful perch. The first racking house we had, I built a big perch in there for them. Well, only about 25% of the chickens used it. I went to the neighbor. He said, well, you have to teach them to be on a perch. I said, well, if I got to teach them to be on a perch then they must not really need it. They just sleep here and, and, and they're fine. And spread their manure too. Yes. They're not just pooping under the perch. So somebody's got a garage 500 square feet. Yeah. What, what can they expect? To get in here. 500 square feet. We try to not put the chickens in more dense than one per three square feet. So you could easily put 150 chickens. And then the rabbits could go in every breeding pair. If you had a 500 square foot garage, you could put, let's say you want to cover half of it with rabbits, 250 square feet divided by six would be 40 breeding does in a garage. 40 does, 150 chickens. And if each doe gives you four litters a year, an average of six, let's say 25, 25 bunnies a year per doe, 25 times 40 is 1,000, worth $25 a piece is $25,000. And if you're 150 chickens, just say average 50% oh, yeah. production, that's four dozen eggs a day times seven days a week is 28 dozen a week times 50 weeks in a year is 1,500 dozen of eggs at $5 a dozen is 7,500. So we've got 25,000 with the rabbits, that's 32,500 hundred dollars in a 500 square foot garage. <laughs> Next up, Millennial Feathernet. Joe? Tell us about it. <laughs> well, this again has a long, long evolution. But when we started with commercial layers, we essentially used the broiler shelters with nest boxes tucked under the back hood with a flip up door on them and put 50 birds in there, moved them along. And we thought this is pretty cool. And then we got visited by a couple from Australia. And this was back when this netting was just starting to come out. This is 25, almost 30 years ago. This netting was just starting to be created. And this couple from Australia came and visited and they looked at what we were doing and they said obsolete well I don't like to be told I'm obsolete who wants to be told they're obsolete and so they told me about this netting they said you really need to try this netting well I'd invested a lot of emotional and uh, time and energy and we were on the front page of Acres USA you don't just walk away from emotionally as much as economically we had 20 shelters you know that's six thousand dollars worth of infrastructure so anyway it took me three years and I finally said you know I'm gonna try that just to prove that it doesn't work and so I got a roll of this the premier netting and I set it up around one of the chicken shelters and then stuck a five gallon bucket under the corner to let the chickens out in five minutes I knew he was right we were completely obsolete a Michael and Joyce plane from Gundaroo Australia is the couple and I knew we were obsolete I walked to the house I said Teresa Michael and Joyce were right we were completely obsolete and so then we started the multi-year thing of, well, what kind of structure, what kind of shelter do you make? And of course, we started with kind of a hoop house idea. But the problem with the hoop house is that all of the structural integrity is down low because there isn't any in the hoops. Well, when you put all your structural integrity down low, you got all this angles and stuff down that you trip over, fall over, catch chickens on. So really, this is Daniel's final idea, and it's just fantastic. 
plastic. It's essentially a scissor truss for an A-frame on skids. And because of the design, all of the structural integrity is up off the ground, so there's nothing on the ground to trip over or catch a chicken when you move it. There's nothing going perpendicular to your flow. And so it's very chicken friendly. It's very person friendly. The first hoop when we made, we got it all up, pulled up in the field, put chickens in it. We had a windstorm that night. The next morning I went up and the hoop houses were completely destroyed. And then we, of course, we rebuilt them better. And then we kept running over chickens because we had all these little angles and stuff down close to the ground. So this answered all of those things. This structure is now, I don't know what, 15 years old. We haven't done anything to it. It's taken 100 mile an hour wind storms. It's got a low center of gravity. It's extremely strong. 40 people can stand up inside of it. You can pull it down a gully, through a creek, over a hilltop, turn it in pinwheels. It's just incredibly strong. Just one so, regular farm tractor can move it? Yeah, just a regular farm tractor okay. can move it. So, uh, so there we are. I can, I can really hear sick. the people freaking out though. There's no walls. No what walls. about the predators? Well, the netting, the electrified okay. netting keeps the predators out. And at night, no owls getting well, somebody on the side? Well, at they go in here and sleep. They have roosts, so at night they go in and sleep. Nice. It just works. So how many chickens do you have in there? A little over a thousand. And you keep them out here all winter, or do no. they go up to the hoop no, houses? No, no. Come Thanksgiving, roughly, first of December, they'll go into the hoop okay. houses. Okay. And so 1,000 chickens. Is this one paddock that we're standing in one yeah. day? Uh-huh. You'll, you'll move them all the way. Where are they going next? They're going up there. So oh, they're going that way. set up with the next. Oh, you the set up. Up there. So Wouldn't that's the idea. You set up the way. next paddock and then there's no disaster. They still can't get out. That's right. They you, still can't. Yeah, set you, you set up a contiguous circle and then you open it up. You move through. You close this one. You pick up this one. Move it here. So how do you herd a chicken? They learn to come with. They want new ground, new bugs, new grass. Do you have uh, to implement a pig board or anything? Herd? No. I mean, initially when you start, you have to kind of work with them or even leave the old one up. Just leave it for a few hours until they finally wander in. But no, once they get used to it, they know very much what's going on. They're crowded up, they're ready to go. Isn't it beautiful? And so 1,000 chickens, half production. <laughs> so on a rolling flock average of 50% production, 1,000 birds are going to give you 40 dozen a day. That's conservative. So 40 dozen a day at five bucks is $200 a day. Times seven wow. is $1,400 a week. Times 50 is $1,400 times 50 is uh, $70,000. And this, we move it every three days. So a quarter acre every three days means we cover one acre every 12. So a six acre field gives you a 72 day cycle. So with these, we can touch that three times a year, unlike the broilers, where it's a lot more intensive, a lot less intensive here. So this is roughly a six acre model with a thousand chickens with a 72 day rest, generating somewhere between 50 and 70,000 a year. But remember for a hundred days, they're in the hoop houses. So this is not a total year round thing. And people could scale this. Oh, you can make this much, much smaller. Yeah, this can be scaled smaller if you want to scale it smaller. Cool. Thank you guys. Yeah. In landscape format, which means when you open it up, it'll naturally sit oh, open. Yeah. We'll walk you through the Eggmobile. We start out with an intro from Joel explaining mm -hmm. history, giving you a lot of the ins and outs and why the design is the way it is. Then we move into your basic tools. Then you got your hardware, nails, screws, nuts, bolts. With an Eggmobile, the beauty of it is building with the materials you've got available and being creative with it. We don't want to pigeonhole you to doing it exactly our way. So Joel went through and he explained all of the most important aspects like ventilation, the importance of slatted floor, how many birds per square foot, how many birds per nest box. Show them this, Joel. The gate. Yeah. This is just how to make a gate, like for a corral or a sorting pen. You can go down to the store and spend $120 on a gate, but you can build your own gate. There's all sorts of notches. There's the simple metal strap. There's a board notch, a gate latch. There's a gravity latch. This is how pigs move and flow. We've got diagrams on how pigs move and flow pig handling. It's a lifetime of lessons. Yeah, it's truly capturing all of our practical experience Six. in one book. How many years is this in the development? 50, 60? 50, yes, <laughs> 50, 60 years, yeah. That book is worth its weight in gold.